Hey guys, it's Josh from Depth Ape Channel, and boy do I have an interesting topic for you guys today. A few weeks ago, I was watching a YouTube video, and I got an ad, and it started off with, hey, I'm a physicist, and I figured out how to make engines way more efficient, and all the engines out there are gonna be basically obsolete with a new engine design. Now, I am a skeptical person in general, folks, and at first I thought, okay, this is just some scam, kind of like, hey, this new ice trick, you're gonna lose 50 pounds overnight, or hey, buy my book and you'll make $50 million in the first year. Not a big fan of those, so I actually was like, okay, that'd be a good video topic. Why don't I look into this a little bit and see if this is a scam or not? Well, folks, it's not a scam. It's actually a real company, and the company is called Liquid Piston. Okay, so what we're on is we're on their website. So Obviously, the landing page here, it says Liquid Piston. That's the name of the company. Uh, pretty cool name, actually. The pistons are not liquid. There's actually not really a piston at all. Closest thing to compare it to would be a Wankel rotary engine. Uh, what they do is on their main page here even show you the differences. Now, the engine here on the left is a Wankel rotary engine. And you can see it's basically a, an elongated uh, circle with a triangular shaped rotor and it spins inside of that. Now there's on the right here, and theirs is a triangular shaped uh, housing with a cylindrically shaped rotor. So they've kind of turned the Wankel rotor engine inside out. Now, if you've never heard of a Wankel engine, they're very interesting. However, not really used hardly at all anymore. I know Mazda used them for a while, and they can really turn some high RPMs and they can make power, but in my experience, and I've never worked on them typically, but if you just do a cursory view of the Wankel rotary engine, they are not very efficient. Low in torque, they tend to burn a lot of oil and very, have very bad emissions. So a lot of problems with that design. It was never a really well, widely used design. So I'm sure it could have had some refinements to it. I'm not here to critique Wankel. I'm sure he was a lot smarter than I am, but problems with that engine design never really took off. So would turning it inside out make it a better design? Well, according to them, yes, it would. Now, one thing I do not like is generally engines are named after the people that invent them or the shape of the engine. So you have an inline six, that is a inline six diesel engine or gasoline engine. You have a V8 or V6 or V12. And those are named after the configurations of the engine. This is called the X engine. The inventors are not named X, and it sure as heck is not the shape of an X. It's more of a triangle, or if you look on the inside, it's more of an inverted Y. Now, obviously the Y engine, or the triangle engine, doesn't sound quite as cool as the X engine, but while it does sound cooler, it's a misrepresentation of the engine, in my opinion. This is the brochure that said click on. And I don't know why I put that in air quotes. It literally is the brochure there that it said click on. So, And notice it says quiet, compact, low vibration, high efficiency rotary engines. Now, from what I could find, these engines are not in mass production. You cannot go purchase them and try them out and see how efficient they are. Now, a few things that I noticed right away, uh, make a lot of claims here about and they say they're quiet, low vibration. I totally believe that. I mean, you have something, instead of having up and down pistons, you have something that's spinning, which generally would be lower vibration. So uh, they have a couple different designs. And here's the X Mini. Like I said, I don't like them being called X, but whatever, marketing. So they have prototypes and then a quote unquote mature design. Now, especially on the diesel one, which is the one I'm focusing on, which is here, uh, this is a naturally aspirated liquid-cooled X engine with direct common rail uh, diesel heavy fuel for a fuel. First off, look at the compression ratios. Super high, up to 26 to 1 compression ratios. I don't know of any diesel manufacturer, I don't know all of them, that are making 26 to 1. That's a very high compression ratio. Look at their uh, alpha prototype. So notice it doesn't have any specified power or time between overhaul, but I believe they're in the beta prototype right now. And look down here, 150 hours. We really wish I could highlight that. 150 hours time between overhaul. 150 hours of operation between overhauls, folks. A diesel engine currently generally has an oil change interval of 250 hours. So this engine in the prototype phase is saying that you have to rebuild the engine 
at what a current diesel engine's oil change interval would be at 50%. That's pretty bad. Okay, folks, so here we are on their diesel, X engine diesel page, and look at some of the information here. There's not a lot of information on their page. There's a lot more in that brochure as far as specifications and stuff go. Remember, I'm not here to say that this is a horrible engine design. I'm just here to say I was shown an advertisement that was saying this was going to revelize revolutionize the internal combustion engine market and everything from what i can tell now unless it's something for like a drone i i'm not seeing that yet now i'm assuming the main engineers everyone else are smarter than me that does not mean though that they have a better engine design than ones i'm familiar with so here is their blurb about the liquid P piston has built functional proof, proof of principle 70 and 40 horsepower diesel engine prototypes and the engine prototypes typo there uh, X1, X2, X4. I'm not, not exactly sure what, if those are the versions X1, X2, X4, which have demonstrated initial operating capabilities. Another typo there. I need to proofread this of the engine architecture. These diesel engine prototypes are capable of running for a short time at light load. That is not why you buy a diesel engine, folks. Generally, diesel engines are meant to be loaded. So, like an on highway truck, you're going to be running 58% load a lot of the time. Um, Some at close to 100% load for long periods of time and for long amounts of time. Some people believe in not even turning their diesel engines off ever. They'll let them idle overnight. They'll run for days and days and days. I don't advocate that, but I'm just saying that is pretty much the opposite of what most people buy a diesel engine for and demonstrate compression ignition of diesel or JP8 fuel and a net indicated efficiency of 33%. That's at light load, which compares to 30 to 40% efficiency in the size range of diesel engines at part load. So currently diesel engines are getting up to about 40% efficiency, and this is getting 33% efficiency. That's less efficiency than current diesel engines are getting. Uh, that's according to their own website here. I haven't done the test myself. I'm just saying 33% is less than 40% by a significant margin. So. Let's look at some of the stuff that they're showing here. These are obviously some of the proof of concept designs. And here they're comparing a X engine, not sure what version that is, to what appears to be a generator engine. And they're saying this is a 35 horsepower diesel engine. I would believe that. And this is a 40 horsepower diesel engine on the right. I'll take their word for it if they say it's 40 horsepower. Now here's a problem with comparing two engines like this. If that's a generator engine on the left, if you know anything about electrical power generation, generally you are generating AC voltage and there's something called Hertz. Now, Hertz is the frequency basically that your generator is running at and it needs to be at a certain setting. Some places it's 50 Hertz. In the US, it's mostly 60 Hertz. And the way you get that is with a four pole generator running at 1800 RPM. Now, you need low end torque to be able to run at 1800 RPM and create 35 horsepower, enough to run a generator and keep it at 60 Hertz. This guy on the right over here, and it doesn't mention anything about this, it just says it's 40 horsepower. 40 horsepower at what RPM though? I'm assuming this is gonna be running at a much higher than 1800 RPM, which would mean you'd need a different generator end to run with it. You also need to be able to run it at a specific set speed. And let's say you were running this as a two pole generator, so you'd be spending about 3600 RPM, but maybe this makes 40 horsepower at 8000 RPM. What are you gonna do? Your engine kinda of needs to be built around the generator, not the other way around. And if you had a problem with creating Hertz and making horsepower and torque at the wrong settings, doesn't mean it's a very good generator option. So that's something to keep in mind other than just the size of these two engines here. Okay, so we're on their FAQ or frequently asked questions page of their website here. And it provides a lot of interesting information as to what we were looking at before. Now remember what I said, folks, I'm not here to crap all over this company. I think it's very interesting. And I find it uh, very cool that they're making a different engine design. Whether it holds up to their claims, I have no idea. It's obviously not something they have produced yet, so time will tell. Maybe this will revolutionize the industry, but I highly recommend you go over to their website. If um, And like I said, they are not paying me. Obviously, I'm critiquing them, but check it out.
it, it's very interesting. And they are hiring also if, if you are looking to get into this industry. So like I said, is the current uh, engine available for purchase? They are in development and not currently available for purchase. So pretty much they're all proof of concept. That's just talking about the status of development. What is the rated horsepower? Out of the two, not really produced, but the two engines they mostly work with, they have the X-Mini, and that's three to five horsepower, and then the 40 horsepower diesel compression ignition engine. What is the RPM range? Now this is interesting because I was discussing the RPM range when talking about the generators. For the larger engines, the RPM range is 500 to 6,000. So, that means their 40 horsepower version diesel compression ignition would rev up to 6,000, which is way past what most diesels, especially like that stationary one we were looking at there, would rev to. Now, you can make more horsepower at higher RPMs if your engine can spin higher, but that generally means it makes much lower torque in general because you have to spin it higher to make horsepower. So that's not always conducive to longer lasting or efficiency. Uh, also, not real good if you are, let's say, trying to pull a heavy load and initially move it. It's really hard to get max horsepower to the wheels when you're trying to move a light load. You need torque and low RPMs generally for a lot of diesel industry stuff. Talks about the compression ratio. Uh, does it require side seal? So like the Wankel and unlike piston engines, uh, yes, like any rotary engine. Like I said, that's very similar to the Wankel. The difference in the X engine, the side seals can be lubricated through access points in the cover, which is a unique feature. So very interesting company here. I saw an ad for it, that's why I thought I'd make an interesting video. If you find it interesting, go to their website, check it out. They, they're they still in development, so maybe this is something you wanna invest some money into or something like that. I uh, just thought it was an interesting topic, thought I would discuss it, and thanks for watching. If you have an idea for a topic or a question about a cat diesel engine, you can email Josh at adeptape at yahoo.com. And like always, thanks for watching.